Hey fellas, what's up? Whoa. Hey fellas, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Mowers and Blowers. I'm Henry, your host of today's episode. As you guys know from my last episode, this Cub Cadet, AGS 2130, has got a bad fuel pump. It's a mechanical fuel pump, the one with the claw. Not craw, craw! The claw that goes in here. The cam hits it, moves it, pumps, pulses, sucks fuel from the back to the front. Well, the claw has been worn out at the tip here where the cam hits all the time, right? It's so worn out that it hardly pulses at all. So I bought a new one for only $9.35 on eBay. However, eBay now charges tax. So it was like 10 something, you know? Still very cheap for a fuel pump. I'm gonna try that when it gets here. That's a bad thing about ordering parts from eBay is that you gotta wait like five days or something like that, five business days. It really all depends on the eBay seller. If the eBay seller sells all the time on a regular basis, they usually just pack it up right away and just shove it out there and uh, it should be in the mail the next day. But then there are newer eBayers who aren't so uh, diligent in taking care of business, right? They'll get paid by PayPal and sit around for a day or two and then it's like, oh, I gotta package that up, you know, but you know, usually they're pretty good. So between three to 10 business days, I'll get my fuel pump, you know? Hopefully I'll get it fast. I think that's the problem. But while I'm waiting for that fuel pump, I'm moving on to my next project. My next project is this Poulon by AYP. Um, I mean, I think it's from AYP, but it's supposed to look just like an LT1000, you know, and it does. So I got this Poulon from my friend Larry and Bob over in Hawpaw. He took the engine, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. The engine was out of it, right? The gas tank was taken out too. The PTO handle is gone. Um, I believe there's some deck hangers that might be missing. Um, there's no seat. There's no battery box. There's no battery. He gave it to me with wheels just so I can get it home. But then I put my own wheels on there and gave it back to him. So these are my wheels. Two fronts are bad. Backs have tubes in them so they hold air. The push button for this is gone. I might have another one, I'm not sure. But it does have the ignition switch and the key. Um, I got this engine from uh, Tad Johnson. Um, it was a rusted out Craftsman LT1000 also. Uh, and I just kept the engine. I stripped that one down and threw the carcass away. So I've got a lot of parts to the LT1000. I'm pretty sure I could use those parts and create one, you know. So this is the engine that uh, Tad Johnson gave me. I got it for completely free. He says this engine works. It was missing a starter motor. And I looked underneath. The uh, flywheel is the metal flywheel, not the one with the aluminum one that's bolted onto it, right? Uh, so this one requires a uh, metal ring gear starter motor, which I got through a trade with my buddy Five Speed Ash just a couple of days ago. He also gave me like three or four uh, uh, leaf blowers and stuff, which, you know, they all need work. But it's not even worth getting the parts for it because it's worth like 20, 30 bucks. You know, if I pay 10, 15 dollars for a part and then go through the trouble of fixing it to make 10 dollars, it's just not even any. It's not, that's why those things aren't worth anything. You know what I mean? Especially if they're busted. So if they're busted, it's not worth buying the parts for it to sell it for a 10 dollar profit. It's just not worth your time. So I'm just putting them in a load and uh, selling it as is in a bulk, you know, whoever wants to give me 30 bucks for it or something like that. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Uh, I've got to look for some engine bolts for this uh, engine. I'm going to secure the engine on here. Uh, it requires a, a muffler too. The, the pipe is still here like that, so I, I'm pretty sure I have a muffler for it somewhere hiding. Um... I'm going to clean out this thing with a scraper because it's like caked on oil everywhere. 
So we'll secure the uh, engine, we'll put the starter on, and I'll show you the starter that uh, five-speed ash gave you. It's in good condition. As you can see it's the uh, Metal Gear one, and it looks to be in very good condition. Thank you very much there, uh, Nick. Nick from Five Speed Ash. He's a regular commenter on my uh, YouTube channel. I don't know. I it has the the good thing about it is that it does have the snow plow attachment, which is kind of cool. And since I don't have a deck for it, uh, maybe that might be an option. You know, pick up a snow plow, and I'll be able to sell this as a uh, a plower, kind of like my GT six thousand, which hasn't moved the entire summer. I'm waiting for my first snowstorm to try it out, but it's been sitting here the entire summer. I I started it up uh, about a month ago. It starts up, starts up just fine. Um, don't know about the carburetor or anything. I don't even know if this thing runs. I, I'm only going by what the owner told me, that it runs, and it's a, it's a fine engine. Hey, who am I to complain? I got it for free! That's right. Free. So that's enough of my monologue. I'm going to get to some action, you know. Monologues should only take about a minute or two just to summarize what's going on. Especially since you guys follow my channel this way. My channel is more of an interactive daily vlog, if you will, you know? It's not like uh, Tarot where he has a different project every time, but he only sh does a video maybe once a week, you know? I thought about doing it once a week, but I've got so much going on that... Um, I can't combine everything that I do in one week, you know what I'm saying? It would be like a five hour video if I did that, you know? So uh, this, this works out just fine. Um, as winter rolls around and there's less um, lawnmower stuff to do, right? You may not see a daily video from me. You may just see uh, one, two, or three a week, you know, because it starts to die down a little bit unless I... Unless I run into like a tremendous snowblower project or something. But uh, that's the way it's going to go. So I'm just um, scraping off some Earl and just getting it kind of clean. And then I'll start uh, finding some uh, engine bolts to secure the engine onto this uh, tractor. Yes, I know it looks a little precarious. Got like a shovel and a lawnmower handle holding it uh, up. But you know what? Works! I'm just not going to put my body in there is all, you know? And I don't know if this is going to work because I don't even know if this goes in the right hole. Thinking it does. The 9 sixteenths. And this makes it a lot easier to put in the bolts, you know. Engine bolts should be a pain in the butt to put in, you know. They're not underneath it. Uh, what I'm also missing is the um, drive belt. And of course I don't have a deck. And now looking underneath it, it actually does have the hangers. So that's good. So I've already got the left side engine bolts on. I'm just putting on the uh, forward right one. And I know the rear right bolt is always a pain because the uh, drive pulley is always in the way. Always. So you got to put on the brake so that the drive pulley moves, moves a little bit so you can get the bolt into that area. But it looks like it's uh, working out. So let me get these engine bolts on, and I'll put the uh, starter on. Since it was missing a drive belt, I went to my box of belts, and I actually found one that looks like it fits. It might be the same one I took off of that stripped LT-1000, so I think it might fit just perfectly. 
but it's missing a double stack pulley for the drive so I'm gonna go look in my box of parts and see if I can find one This one has a lip, this one doesn't. Which means if you wanted to put this all the way up, you could. This is limited. Oh, they're all exactly the same, except for the fact that this one's actually bigger. The bigger, the faster it is. This one's smaller. This is the same diameter. I'm going to use the bigger one. I want to go faster. And look. Oh. It's a muffler for a single cylinder, see? Which is what I need, but I remember this one. This one rattles. You don't want to drive around with this rattling all day, right? This one's not it because this is a double. This is for a V twin or a post twin. Then another one for a, a post twin. This one's already like that. I got this one, but this one rattles worse than this one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use that one, rattling or not. Parts, gotta have parts. Just see it fit. If it fits before I go and find a bolt for this, it's going to be a pretty long bolt too. Keepers keep the belt from falling off. And they work very well. <laughs> that seems to be okay. Just clears this uh, snow plow bracket too. You have to go find a bolt that's long enough to accommodate that. It's working out pretty good while I have this all jacked up and stuff. Got the belt worked out onto uh, the transmission. It's uh, placed through the guides over here and the pulleys. I think I got it all worked out. Got the double stack pulley on here. And it looks like I found the right bolt. Let's just see if it goes in.
belt on, got the double stack pulley. That's good. The uh, engine bolts are on. Yes, now I can put on the muff uh, not the muffler, the, uh, I mean, I could, but I think what's more pressing right now is the starter. We want to try to see if this engine runs, otherwise, what's good of, what's the point of putting a muffler on if it doesn't start, right? The engine's blown. Got them just uh, put on there slightly with my fingers. I'm going to tighten it. This one you can't do because it's gears are in the way. So you need a half inch wrench and just tighten it by hand. Or you can use Torx. You're going to have a difficult time getting that in there too. connect the uh, power to the um, starter from the solenoid. Gotta be careful with this one because as you know if you over tighten this one it'll turn the bottom one and if you turn the bottom one it'll pull the wires out. So you get a thin one that's ground down that'll fit in between here and you hold it while you tighten this outer one so it doesn't move and you can tighten it without pulling the wires out on the, the inner wires. Ah, you can break uh, starters that way. Okay, I'd be amazed if this thing all worked, you know, because I want to connect all the um, wiring here to the harness, and I don't think this harness is the same, see? It's, it's different. Eh? Yep. Just strange. Oh, you know why? Because this uh, tractor initially was a Tecumseh engine. So it has different uh, wiring. That's just great. So we'll have to figure out what's what, you know. But um, as long as we got the starter on here, it ought to work. You know what I mean? At least to turn the engine on. Turning it off is another situation. But I'm going to put the battery on now. To get this to work, I need to find some matching connectors. So this is the black and white wire that goes to the um, fuel solenoid, right? I don't really need that, but I might need it for the lights later. So I need to find a, uh, a male part of that. Here's the stator, right? I need to find the female part to that. My bin full of spaghetti, full of wiring harnesses. And I found the mates to it. Need to find a battery box.
itself an LT-1000. should fit. This is the seat kill switch wire, which I'm probably not going to use, but cool. install the battery. As you guys know, I went to Walmart. Oh. I didn't pick up just one, I picked up two. Every time I go to Walmart, I want to pick up two batteries. Kind of make the trip worthwhile. So, because this is, there's more clearance over here, I gotta have the positive on that side and the negative on that side but it's reversed you know it's just the way the battery's made it's gonna have to just go in this way and pop up a little doesn't matter this one has to be long enough to reach here and this one's too short to reach there so it has to be here it has to be I'm gonna find some bolts for that Seven sixteenths bolt and nut. I always struggle to find ones that'll fit. Good enough. Gotta get a seat too eventually. Coming together though. So I know it's crazy to give this a try. Since we don't have a seat switch connected, I know there's safety switches all over the place. Will this just crank? Let's see. Of course it won't. No way. There's no way it'll work because safety switches have all been um, taken off. So we have to reattach them for the circuits to complete you know it doesn't even have a handle for the PTO there's one right there you know the PTO has to be um, disengaged before it'll allow it to start since it doesn't even have a handle we have no idea where that switch is I may have to wire the ignition switch with a straight wire right to the solenoid for this to work so I actually have a craftsman seat and it's attached already to the pan. However, the a thing that attaches to the pan bracket is missing. So I have to go and find a pan bracket. And I don't really need that because it has no deck yet. If it had a deck, then I'll go and put that on. But right now, I have to see about getting a seat on here. So I need that bracket. Since I've been messing with so many tractors, I forget what the LT-1000 type bracket looks like. So I'll just go to my uh, plug aerator one here. You can see that's what it looks like. Just to confirm, I have another LT-1000 over here. Okay. It's got to be behind here again. I believe this is where all my uh, most recent... See, I have to have some kind of a... Uh, so you can tell that this is an LT-1000 um, steering column cover. So I know that they're around here.
this isn't it, is it? Because if you put that there, how does the holes go? This is not it. Is that it? Wait, does it go like that? No, because it would have to need side side holes. It's not it. Is this it? This looks like it's it. Right? It's got side holes. Put that down. Yeah. Methinks this is it. Perfect. Now, if I could only find the right bolts that I took off of this, right? And it's not threaded, so it would have to be both ends. What a pain. Found a couple of bolts to put the bracket on. I'm gonna find a couple of bolts to work this out. I, I like the better I like it better when the uh, it's a square one, you know. So that you don't have to hold the other end, you know, like these. Where there's a square in there and it holds one end. These kinds you have to do both ends. All right. Starting to really come together now. Got the seat on there. Got a battery. We put the engine on. We mounted it. We put the drive belt on. We put the double stack pulley on. Now we just have to work out the electric and uh, see why it doesn't start. I'm going to have to run a wire straight from the ignition switch directly to the solenoid to power it up. That seat doesn't even have a safety switch on it, so we're going to have to bypass all the safety switches. I planned on doing that anyway. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with this, but this is just you know outstanding and I need to get it cleared out and it would be nice if I could get this engine running and this tractor out of the garage so that in the future I might run into another deck in which case I would put the PTO handle on and try to get the deck to work but uh, first things first right gotta get this engine started and the only way we can do that is to bypass all the switches and just have the power of the ignition switch turn on the mower that's it I took the ignition switch out. Unfortunately, it's the kind that doesn't tell you what's what. You know, usually it tells you S, M, B, G, L, you know, all the tabs, what they go to. But this one doesn't tell you that. So, guess what? I could just look at this pattern. As you can see, it's like a pyramid triangle one with one ground wire over here. This could be the ground or accessory, I'm not sure. But I'm going to look at the model number to this tractor. It's a Poulan weed eater slash whatever, and it starts with the 263. So I'm going to go look it up, look at the schematics of this ignition switch, take the part number to the ignition switch, and put it into eBay, where eBay will have people who make the aftermarket ones, and then they'll show you they have the letters over here. So I just want to find out what S is, you know? S would be starter or solenoid, and you just Take a wire and put it onto the solenoid tab, run it straight to the solenoid, and that ought to be able to start it. All right. Okay, so uh, you ready for this? Uh, I was wrong. I just took the uh, a brush, and I brushed off all the spits over here, and there was letters on there. So I figured out that the white wire was the one that is the solenoid wire. So I, the, red, uh, the white wire ran all the way down there, and sure enough, it went behind the dash onto a safety switch for the PTO and it also went to the back for the uh, seat safety switch. So basically I just cut it, ran that wire directly from the ignition switch to the white trigger wire that's on the solenoid and I connected them too right here, right? Check this out. Here's the switch. 
and turn it. And it turns the starter, which is what we need, right? Yes, right. However, for some cockamamie reason, right, it seems like the starter is the wrong one, which is completely ridiculous because I've used this type of starter for this type of engine like a dozen times, right? It is the metal uh, flywheel with the metal ring gear. But check this out. It looks like this part here is touching the flywheel. Look, I'm turning the flywheel, right? And it's, it's, it's caught onto the top part here. And when I turn it, the ring gear wants to go up, right? But it just, it wouldn't go up anymore because it's, it feels like this starter is too close to the engine, which is really strange. Almost, I feel like there should be like a, a spacer plate in between the starter and the engine block, which I can't figure out, seriously. Look, you see? See that? that? That's weird, man. I'm getting you closer here. See? Watch. The teeth are resting on this part right here. So when this gear is engaged, it, it doesn't even come close to... I mean, it, it will touch, but it will grind, you know, and it'll hit. So I don't understand it, you know. This part here should not be touching the flywheel. I mean, the teeth, and it is, you know. Unless I put it in the wrong hole, which I doubt. I mean, there's only two holes there, you know. But it doesn't seem to be on right. Maybe you guys can figure out. Let me know. Stay tuned for part two of my repowering of this Poulon. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel by a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next part. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.